Alright, so it's time to talk about one of my favorite um, topics, theoretical and experimental probability. And it's one of my favorites because you can do stuff with it. You can actually see the math happening. Um, obviously, yeah, you're not going to. But, so, finding theoretical probability. Our solar system's eight planets, in order of least to greatest distance from the sun, are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Poor Pluto got left out. You know, he got kicked out of the planet. The planet posse. You will randomly draw one of the names of the planets and write a report on that planet. What is the theoretical probability that you will select a planet whose distance from the sun is less than Earth's? First, let's talk about theoretical and experimental. Theoretical probability is what is likely to happen if you were to do it. Um, you know, if you were to do it a hundred times, how many times would you draw a planet um, closer to the sun than Earth? Experimental probability is what does happen when you do it. Okay? So theoretical is if you were to do it, what do we think would happen? experimental is what did happen when we did it okay you actually have to do the experiment to get the experimental probability so let's talk about this uh, select a planet whose distance from the Sun is less than Earth's so how many planets are closer to the Sun than Earth Mercury and Venus so that what we're gonna do is the probability of an event is going to be favorable outcomes over possible outcomes. And favorable doesn't mean what you'd rather do. Favorable in this instance means what you're talking about. So right now we're talking about selecting a planet whose distance from the sun is less than Earth. So favorable is, favorable is going to be the planets who are closer to the sun than Earth, which is Mercury and Venus. So that's two. Possible planets to draw are all the planets they listed. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. And you can always reduce probability You could also rewrite it as a percent. So you, said, you could say you have a 25% chance and either one your probability is one-fourth, or you have a 25% chance. Okay, and then finding the complement of an event, that's the same thing as finding the probability of the event not happening. So, this question asks you what's the probability of a participant not getting drink A. So, what I want you to do is find the probability of getting drink A. This is the easiest way to do it. So, the probability of getting drink A is going to be 20 out of a total 50, which is 2 out of 5. And then the probability of not getting A is going to be 1 minus the probability of getting it. So to find the complement, you subtract the probability of getting it from 1, and then that's your complement. So this is actually going to be 3 fifths.
Okay, and then odds are really simple. They're just like finding probability, except to find the odds, you're going to do the number of favorable outcomes over unfavorable outcomes. So the number of outcomes over the rest of it. Now, I know my spinner is pretty ugly right here, but we're just going to pretend that it's perfect and it's very fair. And we're going to find the odds of the spinner landing on a number greater than or equal to 6. So all the numbers greater than or equal to 6 are right here circled. There are 6 of them. So the number of favorable outcomes here is going to be 6. And then the number of unfavorable outcomes is going to be 2 or 4. Those are the ones we don't want. So that's going to be 2 out of them. So uh, 6 over 2 or better 3 over 1. So our odds are 3 to 1 that we'll get a number greater than or equal to 6. Alright, finding experimental probability. Um, we don't actually have to do an experiment here. They're telling us what happened when, you know, in this situation. So this is, this is why it's experimental. Um, a skateboard manufacturer inspects a thousand skateboards at random. The manufacturer finds no defects in 992 skateboards. What is the probability that the skateboard selected at random has no defects? Write the probability as a percent. So they're telling us that 992 out of 1,000 skateboards were okay. Had no defects, so that's my probability. We want to write it as a percent. So we're going to divide and we get 0.992 change it to a percent by moving your decimal two places to the right and that's going to be 99.2 percent have no defects now let's use experimental probability so they asked 500 randomly selected households in the town if they have a dog of the 500 households 197 respond that they do have a dog if your town has 24,800 households, how many households are likely to have a dog? So we're going to do 197. I think, I think for me, what I would do is just, because this is easy for me to remember, I would turn it into a percent. So we're going to do 197 divided by 500. And I get 0.394. Move that decimal, so that's 39.4 percent. So we're going to ask what is 39.4 percent of 24,800. And if you had me for the percentage chapter last year, You know my little trick. We're going to do is number, what is, so it's x, over of number equals percent number over 100. And we'll solve our proportion. So we're going to do the cross product. 100x equals... Divide 
um, so that's 977,120 divide both sides by 100 and you just move your decimal two places to the left and you get your answer is 9,771.2 so we can't have 0.2 households so we're going to round that up to 9,772 households okay So what we just did is extrapolated on the data we had to find out what we wanted to know. So what we had was 500 households, and we extrapolated, we went outside that 500 to figure out what it would be for 25,000, 25, almost. All right, here are your got it questions. There's six of them tonight, but you'll be okay. They don't take very long. Put them on a separate sheet of paper. Bring them to me tomorrow to prove you watched the video. And if you need me, contact me in any of these ways here. If not, I'll see you tomorrow.